The three main assemblies of the de Havilland hydromatic air screw are the barrel and blade assembly, the distributor valve housing with its oil conductor sleeve, and the dome assembly, which are assembled in that order. In many installations, the constant speed unit is fitted to the engine crankcase immediately behind the air screw and is driven by a quill shaft. A special gasket is used between the crankcase and the constant speed unit and no other jointing must be used. The nuts securing the constant speed unit are tightened down evenly and firmly before connecting the pilot's control. With the barrel and blade assembly slung, carefully clean off the splines on the air screw shaft and in the bore of the spider. See that the rear cone is in position and undamaged. Insert the oil conductor sleeve using the extractor as a convenient handle. Note particularly that the oil conductor sleeve is an air screw part. Lightly smear the splines of the air screw shaft with anti-seizing compound. When offering up the air screw, great care should be taken to get both sets of splines in alignment. No undue force should be used, and when the shaft has entered, the air screw should slide smoothly into position. Next, insert the front cone oil seal washer. Then the front cone oil seal between the air screw shaft and the spider. Shaped to fit the bottom of its groove, taking great care that it is kept square with the shaft. Take great care that no damage is done to the feather edges of the oil seal. Now turn the blades in the barrel to move the gears aside. Assemble the split cone around the flange of the air screw nut and screw them into position on the air screw shaft. A strong tube spanner is used to tighten this nut and the leverage is applied through a short tunnel with extension tubes. A torque of between 750 and 900 pounds feet is required and as it is difficult to obtain this torque without an unwieldy length of lever, the nut is jerked up as far as possible and finally, with the load still on the tommy bar, one or two smart wraps are given to the tommy bar with a lead hammer to ensure that the air screw is full tight in position. Fit the snap ring into its groove. The distributor valve housing joint washer is now smeared with grease and inserted in the air screw shaft with oil conductor sleeve.
marking paint is then smoothed over the joint face of the distributor valve housing. The housing is then screwed into position in the air screw shaft to ascertain if the housing is bearing evenly on the copper jaw washer. Note that for screwing up, the housing is turned in an anti-clockwise direction. If, on removing the housing, the marking is unsatisfactory and it is felt that the housing is not pulling hard down upon the washer, a second washer may be added to make the joint effective. The distributor valve housing should be put up with a torque not exceeding 100 pounds-feet. It was seen that whereas the air screw nut was screwed up in a clockwise direction, the distributor valve housing was screwed up in an anti-clockwise direction because it has a left-hand thread at its inner end. An effective lock is made possible, therefore, by employing a single lock wire whose tang engages both components. It will be seen that the tang is thickened up to fit both the castellations in the air screw nut and the locking grooves in the distributor valve housing. Before mounting the dome, it is essential to turn all blades into the full Though it is possible to turn the blades by hand, a better control is had by using a torque bar. There is then less risk of damage to the segment teeth. The full feathered position is obtained when the end teeth of the gear segments are felt to encounter the stops in the barrel support blocks. On non-feathering air screws, the blades are adjusted to the degree markings on the barrel around the blade aperture. The oil seal rings on the distributor valve housing require attention. These should be liberally oiled. After rotating the rings to ensure that oil reaches the groove, see that the ring gaps are not in line. Before installing the dome, it is most important to see that the stop lugs on the rotating cam are in contact with the coarse pitch stops on the stop ring. This is evident that the piston is back as far as possible in the dome and that the cams are in their full feathered position. The dome barrel oil seal is now stretched into position around the fixed cam base with the feathered edge away from the dome. Now remove the dome plug from the dome assembly and insert the special handling bar.
The handling bar enables the assembly to be lifted about its center of gravity. Having noted the assembly position from the markings on the dowels and the markings on the dowel holes, offer up the dome assembly. Should the dowel holes in the fixed cam base not engage the dowels in the barrel shelf, the whole dome assembly should be turned through a full revolution in the direction of air screw rotation. This is most important. Now engage the dome retaining nut. This nut has not only to secure the dome, but it also has to carry the load arising from the preload on the gears and the compression of the dome barrel oil seal. The necessary torque is applied with a special spanner. The dome securing nut is locked by means of a grub screw. This in turn is wired to prevent its unscrewing. Before operating the air screw under pressure, the blades should be turned by hand to the fine pitch position as a check that the dome has been correctly installed. For this check, the use of torque bars is most essential. The movement of the blades can be observed against the degree markings stamped on the barrel at the blade apertures and should agree within a small margin. It will be immediately apparent should the pitch operating mechanism have been incorrectly meshed as one tooth displacement on the smaller size air screw will produce an error of about 8 degrees and on the larger size one of about 10.5 degrees. Finally the dome plug is inserted. This is tightened down onto its oil seal, unlocked by means of a lock wire. The de Havilland hydromatic air screw owes much of its reliability to the careful manufacture of its individual parts. These are produced in one of the most highly specialized branches of the aircraft industry by the skillful use of elaborate tools. The aircraftsman should maintain the same high standard of craftsmanship when installing it for use. After the installation of the de Havilland hydromatic air screw, the aircraft should be wheeled out for engine running and air screw adjustments.
For engine starting and for air screw testing, the use of auxiliary storage batteries is essential. By relieving the aircraft batteries of the heavy loads imposed by air screw testing, they preserve the proper aircraft voltage which certain of the instruments require. Before commencing to check the air screw for adjustment and operation under power, the air screw control lever is put to the maximum RPM position and the engine started up. And RPM to warm up. The air screw lever is then drawn back to the minimum RPM position and left until the revolutions cease to fall. This indicates that the air screw dome has filled with oil. The air screw control lever is then pushed forward and exercised over its entire range to ensure that all the air has been replaced by oil. This condition is indicated when the RPM follows the movement of the control lever. The air screw control lever is then pushed fully forward into the maximum RPM position and the throttle opened up to the takeoff boost as specified on the engine data plate. The RPM should remain at the maximum permissible, in this case 3000. Opportunity should be taken at this time to note the amount of overswing and the time taken for recovery. Normal overswing is about 100 RPM. Similarly, when the throttle is brought back, the underswing of the needle should be noted. Its amplitude should be of the same order and should rapidly subside. Finally, the constant speed lever is brought back to the minimum RPM position. During this movement, the RPM indicator needle should follow the constant speed lever closely until the minimum RPM governing is reached. On this installation, this is at about 2000 RPM and should occur when the constant speed lever is at the end of its quadrant. If the air screw is being adjusted to the engine for the first time, it will often be found that the maximum obtainable RPM is either more or less than the maximum permissible. Adjustments then have to be made at the constant speed governor, which is fitted with stops to restrict the maximum RPM as required. Behind the protecting cover on the mechanically operated governor will be found the maximum RPM stop, a cheese-headed screw with a locking nut. When the RPM is found to exceed the maximum permissible, the procedure for adjustment is as follows. With the constant speed lever fully forward, the engine is opened up to take off boost. Then the constant speed lever is drawn back until the required RPM is shown. The position of the control lever in the quadrant is now marked and the engine stopped.
The maximum RPM stop is now unlocked and screwed in until it is just felt to make contact with the stop arm on the speed control shaft. Adjustment is then made to bring the air screw lever to the takeoff position in its quadrant. When the governed RPM is found to be less than the maximum permissible, First, unscrew the stop one turn and run up the engine to ascertain what increase of RPM is affected by a single turn of the stop. The stop can then be turned the required amount to complete the adjustment. The controls are then adjusted so that the control shaft lever just makes contact with the stop with the air screw lever in the maximum RPM position. Large multiple engined aircraft are often provided with hydraulic control to their constant speed units. Adjustment is more easily affected in these installations since it is required merely to screw up the cover one turn and to note the corresponding decrease in RPM. The necessary adjustment, clockwise or in this case anti-clockwise, is then made to obtain the correct maximum RPM. The cover must of course be locked. With the engine opened up to about 1,000 RPM, the feathering switch is given a firm, deliberate pressure. As the blades turn into the feathering position, the RPM will drop to about 500 or 600 by the time the operation is complete. After approximately 10 seconds, the feathering button will throw out, indicating that the air screw has feathered. The engine should then be stopped by switching off, in order to verify that the blades have reached the full feathered position. To unfeather, the pilot's feathering switch is again depressed and held in the closed position until the blades are seen to have resumed a normal flying angle. Subsequently, the air screw may be unfeathered with the engine running. To do this, hold in the feathering switch until the RPM rises to 800 and let go. Where the engine is permitted to run, it will occasionally be found that the air screw commences to unfeather soon after reaching the feathered position without the pilot's switch being operated. This action is not abnormal. It occurs by reason that engine oil pressure is still acting within the dome after the feathering pressure has been cut off. This cannot occur in flight, as a feathered air screw will stop the engine even though the throttle be left open and the switch left on.